welcome to Typology, the show in which we explore the story of you through the lens of the Enneagram. My name is Anthony Skinner, producer of the show, and we are thrilled to have you here with us today on this Valentine's week. I hope you had a great Valentine's Day wherever you are. Hey, our guest today is Melissa Hobley, Global Chief Marketing Officer of OKCupid, and we are talking relationships today. Melissa is a two through and through with a three wing. And as I said, Ian and Melissa talk relationships today, and Ian really goes into some depth on what different Enneagram types need in terms of communication, what they're looking for. So this is a really interesting conversation. Hey, before I get to our guest and our host I want to remind you, Ian's brand new book, The Story of You, is out right now and available. It's such a good read and a really interesting take on the Enneagram. I know you're going to enjoy that book. Be sure and grab it. It's available anywhere fine books are sold. The audio book is available as well, read by Ian himself. Hey, that's it for me, Anthony Skinner. Again, I hope you had a great week. Lots of love from us here at the Typology family. And now, without any further ado, here is the host of our show, Ian Crum. Melissa Hobley, Global Chief Marketing Officer of OKCupid, Enneagram 2 with a three-wing welcome to Typology. Thank you so much for having me. I want to just begin because I've been married for 33 years, and so I am well beyond the dating app uh, season of my life. Everybody's got to know about what OkCupid is. Let's start there. Sure. So OkCupid is one of the biggest dating apps in the world. We're also one of the OG dating apps. So we've we've been doing this almost 20 years. We're very good at helping you find your person, whether you are in Paris or Berlin or Detroit or Nashville or L.A. or New York or wherever you are. That's fantastic. And what differentiates it from, you know, all the other dating apps which are out yeah. there? Yeah. So OkCupid, and it's a good, it, 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 it's, it's um, a reason why I'm here talking to you guys today. On OkCupid, we're famous for OkCupid questions. You have to answer at least 15 to set up your profile. Uh, we have over 3,000 and we're always adding questions, taking them away. And the questions... Um, it might ask you if you're passionate about travel and how you want your partner or potential matches to answer that. And that's how we use the algorithm to determine who to show to you. Uh, but it's a place where if you are if you are high intent, we say, if you're looking to go on the date, if you're looking for your person, if you're looking for real love, we are really, really good at that because we slow you down. We ask you these questions. We tell you how important is that? That powers the algorithm. We, we think we have the best algorithm in the world because we've been doing this for so long. We're very affirmative. If you are LGBTQ, if you are young, old, orthodox, atheist, whatever you are, uh, we want you to feel great about that. And we want to bring that to the experience. And then we're going to match you on it. And we are also the only app in the world that will match you on social and political issues that you care about. So if you're passionate about the environment, for example, you probably are not a good fit with somebody that does not believe climate change is real. Mm -hmm. And we're the only place that, that wants to ask you those questions. And you can skip them and every question is optional. And uh, But then we'll match you on that. If you're passionate about criminal justice reform, we're the only app in the world that will capture that, that cares to ask, and then we'll, we'll use that to help us figure out who to show to you. Mm. Um, it doesn't really matter. You know, in a lot of dating apps, you'll see like a neighborhood or somebody's like eye color. And that doesn't tell me a whole lot about compatibility. That mm. does not tell me if we're going to go have a coffee or a glass of wine and then you know, have this great conversation and then want to make out or then want to keep dating or meet the family. But but knowing how people feel about important issues of our day, um, that that does tell you a lot about it. So not not to mention it saves you time. It saves you time. And like dating is hard. Dating is really hard. And I'm from the Midwest, but I've been in New York City a long time. I was single in New York City a long time. 
it's really hard. And it's hard if you're a single mom and it's hard if you're a widow and it's hard if you're 22. It's, it's really hard. And, and I talk to daters every day who they don't feel enough. They don't feel tall enough, skinny enough, pretty enough, successful enough, attractive, whatever it is, well-read, educated. And, and we try to create an experience that says you are enough what exactly what you are is enough and you're a great fit for someone and uh and we're free we're free and so you have no excuse (laughs) hey listen i'm jumping on i just download i just downloaded it (laughs) but but, you know it's, it's a great it's a great way um you know it's why i'm talking to you guys today is i think we tend to attract people that are very curious about what is a good fit for me? What, why am I drawn to certain people? What, uh, what can I, I have this little space on a phone, on a profile to say who I am or what I'm looking for. And that's so hard to do. I work in this space and it's hard to do. And I'm, I'm, I get, I get wedding invitations every week around the world. So I, I see, I see this, but I think, um, Dating apps do play a great role in helping, you know, helping you find somebody. And um, mm. we're really proud of doing a good job at that at OkCupid all over the world. Great. Oh, I'm so excited. So we have so much we have to talk about. Yeah. So much to talk about. I want to start here, though. Um, the Enneagram. Um, how did you learn about it? And how did you learn that you were an Enneagram 2 with a three-way? I, so this is a great story. Um, COVID was a really tough time if you were single, right? You may, you were maybe not seeing family. You were, you know, you may felt a little isolated and lonely. Um, okay. Cupid had this surge of activity and, um, I, I am, uh, I'm married with two children, but I am on 27 apps around the world right now because I need to know what that experience is like. And I've certainly spent a lot of time on okay Cupid. And I was swiping through profiles and I was looking at profiles, uh, men, women, straight, gay, queer. And I kept seeing, I kept seeing things like seven W one, two W four. And then I kept, I, I would see Enneagram, but I, it was always, it was like often a little mysterious, like drop me your Enneagram or guess my Enneagram or, you know, uh, 7W2. And, and, and so I Googled it and that, that was what brought, and I, I kind of fell into the rabbit's hole. And then I, so I'm, I'm relatively new to this world, but I, I learned about it from my daters who were using it to signal what they were. They were using it as like, Hey, if you're, if you're in, if you're in on this, like send me a message. And then I asked a few daters about it and they said, it's so interesting because it's immediately like, it'd be like if someone showed up at a coffee shop or a bar wearing the t-shirt of the band that maybe not everybody knows, not Rolling Stone, but like the more obscure band. Right. And, and, and immediately gave them a shorthand and an icebreaker and a thing to Mm -hmm. talk about. And so, you know, I found about this because people are connecting on it. They're talking about it more and more on on their OkCupid okay profiles, and so that took me down the rabbit's hole, and uh, and that's how I started to 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 find out. So I've now done mine. I made my husband do it. I've started your- to make my team at OkCupid. Okay We're based in New York City. I've started to make them do it. Fun. And it's fascinating. Hmm. And so many applications in your universe to that we need to talk about. So many. I think that, and I think that you see more discussion and knowledge. I mean, I can't speak for what's going on in the other dating apps, but I think we're seeing it more in OkCupid because we tend to attract people that are very curious and introspective. And so they may, they've been, they've known their Enneagram for a while. Maybe they read your book, this this podcast, they're, you know, they, they are using those types to understand, well, what are my blind spots in a relationship? What are my blind spots at work? What are my, um, who would I work well with? These are the kinds of things I start to think about. And in the when you're in the business of 
helping people find other people and you're in the business of relationship building, you're always trying to think of how do I make it easier for these two people to talk? Mm -hmm. How do I make you think about, you know, here's one thing that happens on dating apps. Women say no to, for our straight couples, women say no to everything and guys say yes to everything. And so what if you, women always think, by the way, that guys are like harsh, but they're not. Women are like, I want, I had, they have a list. They want all these things. They want six, two and no, 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 no. And you're like, you got to relax a little bit. Um, and, 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 and so we become interested in, and I've become interested in this space and more people at okay Cupid because it, it, it's another way to help people think about what am I, how do I interact? What's a good yeah. balance for me? How, you know, you guys have had really interesting conversations about relationships on this show and, and with couples directly. And so, uh, yeah, the applications are really endless. They are. And I, uh, I won't rehearse everything I could say right now because sometimes our people have heard me say it, but just, just because it's new for you, I'm going to say a couple of things, right? First of all, uh, what the Enneagram offers to uh, people in relationships or seeking relationships, right, is number one, it, like what we were saying earlier, it saves you time. Mm -hmm. if, if, I'm a, if you're a two on the Enneagram and you meet a guy who is a five, right? Well, as a two, you are a bullion, you're effusive, um, you're a very feeling-based person. You live, you, you process the world through your heart rather than through your head or your gut. And um, not, ra well, more, more, because you also do obviously process the world through your, your brain and your gut, but you, this is where you're dominant, right? Mm. Um, you are very outgoing, as a two, usually twos are extroverted, um, cheerful, and also incredibly emotionally connected. So when you came on this program, I guarantee you, you're unconsciously looking at Anthony and I, and you are immediately reading feelings. You are reading emotional cues on my face. You're seeing when I'm smiling. You're seeing if I frown. You know what I mean? And then you're yeah. kind of you know, you're, you know, you're trying to figure out how do I communicate? And it's very, very fast. You're almost psychic around feelings. Mm -hmm. And actually being able to detect the needs of others and knowing immediately how to meet the needs of the other. Right. Wow. And, and so Wild. it's like talking to a psychic. Like I, yeah. Right. And so, Wild. and that's, I could write 200 pages on a two or a five or a seven. Right. So the five, on the other hand, the, which is called the, a, the investigator, sometimes the observer, they're the most emotionally uh, detached number on the Enneagram, highly the most analytical number on the Enneagram, typically introverted, um, a person who loves to collect wild amounts of information and knowledge about oftentimes about niche subjects. Um, they don't like small talk. Typically, uh, you love to arrive at a party first and leave last, usually helping with the dishes on your way out the door where, <laughs> where, whereas the five wants to arrive maybe on the later side and definitely leave on the early side, right? You can talk to anybody and a five can be a little socially awkward. And, uh, anyway, so that's a lot of really fast information. As a two, if you know that you're going out with a five, that none of that stuff is personal. <laughs> you, just have, you just have so much immediate information. It's crazy. And imagine if daters had, were armed with a little bit of that information. Oh, oh my gosh. It's a, like you, I could easily write a one page description <laughs> of each of the types and a person who's a, who knows they're a two you know, on the Enneagram could read about the five. And, and that wouldn't mean to say that, oh, I'm going to disqualify that person. I'm not going to go out right. with them. It would just mean, oh, this looks like an interesting person. Oh, and here's, here's a low resolution picture of what the interior world of that person is like. Uh, and why they're the way they are. That's right. Yeah. And why they are the way they are. Yeah. And um, the, the way that it's communicated, at least in our work, is... Uh, 
it's not academic. It's fun information. It's accessible. Yeah. It's actionable. You know, it's all that stuff. And so, you know, uh, if a two knows that about a five, when the five takes longer to talk about their feelings, the two doesn't think, oh, this person's sort of emotionally, you know. No, you process feelings immediately. It takes a five, three days to process what you process in three minutes. Right. Yes. And it helps you develop empathy because it's, yes. it's all about what's motivating the person instead of just yeah. the behavior. Yeah. So yeah. much we can talk about. Okay. So what is your husband's number, by the way? Yes, let's I know, know that. He's, that. He's an eight wing seven. I, I knew he was going to be an eight. Did you know that? Yeah. Well, twos and eights often find each other, right? Yeah. yeah. And oftentimes, I, get, I don't know what the dynamic is there because there's three different types of eights. But I would say... That eights sometimes, sometimes, not always, but it's sort of a thing sometimes, is that the, the eight will uh, outsource the feelings to the two. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. A thousand percent. Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, and they also um, rely on the two's naturally warm uh, and comfort you know, you just you have a, what I call the wild, the wide circle of concern. People feel so safe with you. They they gladly tell you even intimate details of their life early in the conversation with you that they never would with an eight, because the eight doesn't radiate that kind of safety, right? And so the eight and you sometimes rely on that eight to give you the courage to set boundaries. A thousand percent, yes. And how to say no. And how to say no. Yes. Right. Because otherwise, I, as a two, I'll, I, I won't be careful with my time. I'll feel drained. I'll, I'll get so emotionally involved as a two that, that the eight kind of, you know, okay, yes. well, here's the plan. Here's no, we're going to like set some boundaries here. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, I want to tell you about a new product I've been using. I recently started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted a more efficient way to optimize my immune system. So why Athletic Greens? Well, many of us take a multivitamin to support our health, but for me, it's really important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. Otherwise, it can be a waste of money. Since adding Athletic Greens to my morning smoothie, I noticed I've been sleeping better and can tell a difference in my mental clarity and alertness, which, as you know, is important for a guy of my age. And since it's trusted by leading health experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais and recommended by professional athletes, I know it's a quality product. All right, so what is this stuff? Well, with one scoop a day, Athletic Greens provides 75 high-quality, highly absorbable vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help me start my day right. Their special blend supports my gut health, my nervous system, my immune system, my energy, recovery, focus, yep, and aging, all in one scoop right now. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially through the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash typology podcast. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash typology podcast to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. The other thing I'm just going to say about the Enneagram and partnerships, that's really important. If two people know their Enneagram number, 
they immediately have a vernacular and a vocabulary to have a conversation about how they see the world and move through it. It's awesome. You know, it's it's so fast. It's amazing. And and what we've started, that's what we're starting to hear from daters, too, is the ones that are aware of their Enneagram and and have and have this interest in that. As I said, it's a shorthand. It's like, a oh, OK, I know what I'm dealing with, because what happens in dating, too, is people take things really personally and it's OK putting yourself out there is, is difficult and you're vulnerable and you're scared to be rejected. And especially if you're a dater with kids or you're a widow or, you know, you're, you're, you're not 22, there's more at stake and you have less time to put out there, right? If you're a nurse and a single mom, you're lucky if you have one night out a week to go on a date or, or to be, you know, messaging or swiping on OkCupid or whatever app you're on. And, um, and what we're starting to see is, as, as Enneagrams, you know, become more and more popular is it's, it's helping people first just talk because of the dating app. Like, again, just like, we just need you to talk, you know, and connect. And, and, and so it's giving them that, that nudge to do that or like, oh, this is common ground. I'm into this too. Uh, and then it's giving that, like, as you said, they have a shorthand, they have a language to, to, to chat, to get to know each other. And, and, you know, Anthony, as you were saying, there's like this, this empathy, there's an understanding, there's a, um, it's not so self-centric, which is what dating usually is, is, oh my God, he didn't text me back. That means he must not be into me because I'm not this, is what hap- right. goes through a lot of our daters' minds, where if they're informed or armed with, with this world, it's, it's tremendously helpful. And at the end, at the sure. very least, saves some, some time and heartache. So, I'll say this too, just to clarify, as accurate as what Ian just said was, it, it's still a flyover. Like it yeah, I just get, gave a flyover. I mean, it can get, it's endless where you can go with it. It just yeah. gets even more so connected. So it, it's interesting, you know, we could go through each of the types. You could actually interview me for, if you wanted to and say, okay, what's this type like in relationships or this type? But, oh, uh, yeah. But, but I want to know, do you see one number appear? Because I could guess this, actually, <gasps> probably. What numbers are you seeing over and over again more than any other numbers? Do you know what they are? You know what? Uh, I Hang on. I'm checking my – I'm checking – we pulled some data on this because we're also famous for having really interesting insights. While I look it up, do you want to guess? No. Uh, I mean, I guess you, I think you would have uh, lots of different ones. Um, but yeah. I, I, I you know, would, I don't know that we have, I don't know if we have it pulled, but I may actually like fire off an email to my data scientist to say, can you pull this for me in the next 10 minutes? It's so, it would be so fascinating. Um, and, you know, I think that, uh, one of the ways it could help people, and again, I would caution people against saying, you know, don't turn a da- don't turn down a date on the basis of an enneagram right. type. Right. Use it as a data point in the decision. Yeah. Right. But it's not the determinant. <laughs> right. At the same yeah. time, a person could say, "Man, I haven't had much success with fives or sevens or nines in the past," and mm-hmm. so I'm going to use that as a data point. It doesn't mean this isn't a great person because if it's a highly self aware five or seven or nine, anybody could be be great. But yeah. Right. If they're a healthy, self-aware, uh, and they've done some work on themselves, you know, so, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. But, you know, I know for me and I've never discussed it, but there are certain types on the Enneagram that I historically have had more trouble with than others. Re- in relationships, so particularly if, in, and I don't get along with any Enneagram number that's unhealthy. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. or I just it's a, I got to burn more calories. To be in relationship, and you know what you're up against or in for too. I, I know what I'm in for yeah. if they're yeah, not very healthy, right? Yeah. Uh, for example, we have the improver Enneagram One. They used to be called the perfectionists, and so these are people who see a world in which the that uh, that rewards good people and punishes bad people. 
Uh, they, uh, the strategy they have for winning love and a sense of mastery in the world is to perfect themselves, others, and the environment. Now, if that number is healthy, they're beautiful. When they're in the average to kind of like not doing great space, um, they tend to be perfectionists who can be judgmental, critical, tend to see the world. Uh, their way of seeing the world is the only way to see the world. They're black and white thinkers, uh, either or. Um, you, you see where I'm going? Yeah, and so yeah, it, totally. Someone, there are certain <laughs> numbers on the Enneagram that would be like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? And other numbers would be attracted to it. Interesting. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, it is. It's it's so much you and I can talk about. Okay. Um, so do you have some tips for people who are dating in this weird COVID world? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I did just look. There's been a 35% increase in just six months of people posting their Enneagram on OkCupid. I'm so that's, fascinated. That's a big number in a dating app world where you have, you know, you have millions of daters around the world. That's that's substantial. So You said 33% in the last six months? 35% in the last six months. Wow. Yeah. Good that's Lord. U.S. But um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's yeah. so interesting. Um, yeah. Let me, let me not ask you that question yet. Let me ask you a different question. Because I want to circle in on you. you a little bit. Can I circle in on you? People people love often it. say that, but I kind of go to that. But anyway. I love it. All right. So I would say that in your role as a chief marketing officer, and I could name other careers uh, or other positions um, for each type, but you are the perfect type for that job. Ooh. Like twos tend, first of all, if they're the forward face of the company, Nobody can beat them. Nobody. Um, twos, threes, and fours are the most image conscious numbers on the Enneagram, which can be a good thing or not a good thing. However, in a position, it's a great thing because nobody can project an image of the corporation or of the organization better than a two. They have so much like energy around the mission and they are great at recruiting other people like the best talent there is because the, on the basis of your self-presentation and and you, you sell the company like nobody's business like everyone's like i gotta join like that is an um, i want to be like around melissa if miss you, you know what i mean like you are brilliant at it. Now, I'm just going to record this portion for my review with my CEO next week. <laughs> so, or if you want to just join that Zoom, it would be yes. great. By the way, I've, um, I've, most of my work is corporate. That's the vast majority of my work is 98% corporate. And I could actually tell your, your CEO how to do a 360 on a two versus an eight, a five, or a seven so that it's effective and that it actually generates the result that they want. Because... That's, Amazing. Oh, yeah. It's it's really handy. Really a useful uh, yes. tool. Yes. You're so, coming to New York. <laughs> okay. Bring it. Uh, it, it so anyway, what I was going to say was twos also uh, are brilliant in marketing because they read – um, they read the world and you're in a heart business and you, you read the world through the lens of feelings – and you pick up on what does the market want? What does it need better than, I mean, it's just brilliantly, right? And you're able to find language that is sticky, right? That really grabs people and meets the felt need like that. You pick up on felt need like boom. And then, you know, you're clearly a very bright person. And then you go, and this is how we address that need. In a, wow. wins in a winsome and uh, interesting, but also effective way. And then you've got data science people. And so they're going to help you make sure that that, yeah. that that heart information has some validity, you know, behind the firewall, right? Behind no, the firewall, behind the, like the fireworks. And, yes. and, and I also in exploring the two, it, you know, um, we're positive. We we're optimistic. And in marketing, you have to be that because you are trying to get people excited and engaged and 
dating apps are really, it's a really competitive space now. And, and so you, you have to believe and you have versus all of my engineers and product people are really critical thinkers that um, are building very complex technical systems to be able to match, you know, all these people. And so, um, you know, I, I have to believe in the positives and I have to believe that we're, you know, the marketing is going to work. I'm going to get people to talk about it and come here and believe that this is a place where they'll, they'll meet someone great that they they're really compatible with and they'll just make them feel good and feel loved. And so, um, but that is, um, that's really interesting. And I, uh, will need you to help me get a raise. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody. One of the lessons I've learned over the years is that not everybody benefits from a traditional 50 minute counseling session. And this is why some people can go to couples therapy or personal counseling for a long time and never really get anywhere. This is why I'm such a believer of intensive counseling and my friends at restoring the soul in Colorado, created by my longtime friend, Michael Cusick, to help couples or individuals experience deep change in half-day blocks over one or two weeks. Now listen, if you can't wait months or years to get to the bottom of an issue or to experience breakthrough, you need to get in touch with my friend Michael and his extraordinary team of counselors at Restoring the Soul. If you're looking to get out of the rut you're in, but can't wait months or years, call Restoring the Soul today for a free consultation with Michael's staff. Call 303-932-9777 and learn how their intensive counseling process can help you. As a special bonus, just for typology, listeners make sure to visit www.restoringthesoul.com slash typology to download their pdf called five ways unaddressed trauma may be derailing your relationships i would also tell someone that that's working with you it's like well how do i how do i incentivize you know how do i incentivize melissa and i'd say words of appreciation are just enormous like you cannot tell Melissa enough how much you value what she does, how she does it. You know, like like the best drug for a two is to hear the words, I don't know what we would do without you. You know, that is that is so insanely correct. And when I was reading about the two and it was, you know, that we need to feel appreciated and we need some of that acknowledgement. I'm like, oh yeah, that's spot on. More than my right. salary, more than, you know, um, other things. You don't have things. to say that out loud. So, yeah. so, yeah, right. <laughs> so but Melissa, so, but check this that. out. Like if you were, from this interview. <laughs> right. If you were, if you were a three, I said, I'd say if you want to incentivize a three, then, d you know, sort of hold up a promotion, a new title, a financial incentive, make sure that they have a, the ability to have a way to quantify success, right? You are the most interpersonal number on the Enneagram. Like you go to bed thinking relationship, you get up thinking about relationships. That is what you do. I mean, this is like the perfect job. She, oh, so she runs say. a ding dang, okay, yeah. Cupid. I, I, mean, she, I am in the app. relationship business. She's literally. in the relationship business. Yeah. She's the most interpersonal number on the Enneagram. <laughs> yeah. Could this get any better? No. Oh my god. And gosh. you're in the heart triad and a heart business. So I mean, like, oh my lord, this yeah. is like yeah, you definitely need to play this for your CEO. Okay, so oh, I thousand percent, and I need, I need him, I need him to do it. I told him this is so interesting. I got to get you to do this, and he was up for it. So I, I need to. Uh... By the way, what do you tell people when they want to know when they're desperate to know somebody's enneagram, but they can't, they haven't done it, or they haven't, you know? Do you? What do you tell people? Do you tell them do the quiz? guessing how they might guess what do you do yeah so there's a couple of ways one is i'm going to be a little self-promotional here but it's because i actually believe in these things i have a uh, an assessment on my website called the ieq9 that's one way you want to make sure though these quizzes that you see in like vogue magazine and all that stuff it's trash yeah. It is just trash because yeah. the Enneagram, you, the way you construct a test is so important. You've got to work with, I work, you know, with a research psychologist. It's like, you got to make sure this test is accurate, right? Yeah. And, and you've yeah. got to make sure that the report that you get back is accurate, 
right? Yeah. So that's yeah. really important. The The second way is you can read a book. Like I have a book called The Road Back to You. It's a fun narrative, somewhat snarky. You'd appreciate it. It's got a little New York in it. And I, it's, I bought this book and I started reading it. You do. You have like a New York, ed, like a New York uh, flavor to it. And you're, you're really gifted with words. And uh, it just translates beautifully. Yeah, well, that, I'm uh, so glad. And then... Um, you know, once you become a really gifted student of the Enneagram, and this takes a little bit of time, right? Yeah. You can begin to spot certain things and go, hmm, that, that feels too to me. Like just being with you, right? Uh, I bet you if I walked into your uh, apartment, I might be able to guess your type. Oh, can you guess on someone's face? Wow. Uh, much of the time. Yeah, or I could wow. pick up on... Um, the way you dress, uh, the way that you express yourself with your hands, with your face, how much affect is there, uh, the clothes that you choose, you know, like I just, I've been doing this so long and I've interviewed so many people and I've been in this, embedded in this world long enough that now I also do with a lot of humility, knowing that I can't see their in interior world or what's motivating them necessarily right, on the outside. Right. But a lot of times... I don't know what the percent is, but better than the average bear. You know, you can start to really, really pick it up. But that's wild. Yeah, it is it? wild. So, so incredibly interesting and and helpful. You know, and uh, yeah, I get I get excited to see it. Okay, why don't we just talk about different types and relationships? Yeah, you want to do that? Why don't you ask me? All right, okay. So imagine. Yeah, can I ask you? Can okay, I ask you, you? You ask me questions about relationships, and okay, we'll, let me we'll ask try you this. and. Ask. Okay, let me ask you this first. Let me ask you this question. Here's something that that would be really helpful for for our millions of readers. What what should is there an enneagram that you should, especially if you're a blank, you should be putting that on your on your profile. I mean like okay, I'm looking for a five or a seven or something. I mean, yeah, or maybe because this one is because I'm an, I'm a relatively new student, but maybe because this um, this enneagram is 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 more introverted, a little less likely to put themselves out there. It's actually even more important, or can be even more powerful or transformative if they put that their uh, whatever their enneagram is on their OkCupid okay profile. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, if you say Enneagram 5, what I would do, right, is, uh, and by the way, I don't have the meter running on this, but this is how I make a living. If you, if you, you know, I would say, okay, so uh, we, sh we should, let's put this in, but maybe we should offline. I'm not sure. Okay, so, you know, um, I would say find out their type. Yep. Have on offer a single page description of the nine different types. Yep. If they if they want it, right? That's a opt in sort of a thing, uh, and so that they have some baseline. Maybe they have just a cursory knowledge of the enneagram, but they want to. They you know, and then they might say, you know what? I think sevens are really interesting. I'd I'd love to meet a seven. It, that would be very uh, cool if you had you know, a description for each type. So somebody can go in and they can they say, oh, there are seven, what does that mean? And you click on it and like all of a sudden, boom, you can see a, a, a short description of a seven. Right. That's so interesting. I mean, what would really be wild is if we if we were able to actually build a matching component into that. Um, that I mean, that it, would be and then, so then what you would need is, uh, you know, you could actually create a whole realm for Enneagram fans actually, and actually create Enneagram fans, right? Who are like, oh, I this is a great shorthand for me learning about different people. Uh, it saves me three dates, yeah. right? And, and, or, oh, wow, an eight, you know, I, I tend to be someone who is conflict averse. It'd be fascinating to be with somebody who's okay with conflict. Yeah. Right? That would be fascinating. Or be fascinating. I mean, there's a million... Ways a million that, ways that to do it. Wait, oh, yeah. can I ask you this? Yeah. Who's the most romantic? Oh. <laughs> You're looking at them. Valentine's yeah. Day is next week. Who's the most romantic? Is, is, yeah. The fours. I would, well, would you say the four? Fours? Everyone's, I would say that all nine numbers are just romantic in their own way. Right. In their, in their own unique way. In their way. own unique way. So you'd have to actually say to me, and the love languages are different. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, right. You know, right, like right, for right. a two, I'd say, 
for a two, um, you know, if I wanted to express love to a two, I would surprise you with a meal out. Yeah. I would surprise you with flowers. Uh, I would, you know, figure out what is it I would give you because you don't typically you tend to want to focus on what other people need. And at the same time, you, you're really not good at knowing what you need. Yeah. I would say, OK, I'm giving you a day at a spa or whatever it is that you love. Right. Because yes. you tend you tend not to take care of yourself as much as you do other people. Right. So interesting. So on the other hand, uh, uh, an eight or let me say um, a five might say uh, one of the ways that you could give them love is by giving them more space. Uh, it, mm. it could be talking to them about their interests more than the feeling space. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know? totally. Totally. Wait. OK, now this is a selfish one. How do I, my husband's an eight, what do I, an eight wing seven, what do I, how do I better show him? What does he need? Mm. So here's how eights move through the world. Eights uh, have a need to assert strength and power over others and the environment in order to mask vulnerability and weakness, right? And they are, uh, you run on 120 volts, eights run on 240 volts, right? They, an eight with a seven loves adventure. They, they are going to love, uh, they're going to be, they're going to have a spontaneous edge to them. Um, they uh, love very body-based things. So, you know, let's go to the climbing gym, you know what I mean? Or, or what, yeah. you know, or that, you know, they... Uh, and unfolding like a series of surprises that would be that if, especially be. that seven wing you know it's like yeah. it could be, okay. yeah. I'm not going to tell okay. you what it is yet you know it's like and then it keeps kind of unfolding for them eights just you know eights uh, part of the love language of eights is directness directness got they it just tell them the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth put it right out there and they want you to bring the juice they want you to meet them toe to toe nose to nose they love it when they, see, because to an eight, uh, what feels like conflict to you feels like connection to them. Yeah. And what feels like into what feels like uh, intimidation to you or another number feels like intimacy to them. Wow. Hey, the other day you said this word, this phrase, uh, the eights have this push against energy. Yeah. Oppositional energy. Yeah. Yeah. So you do not have that. The, the eight has this sort of tendency to naturally push against people, places, things. You know, they have this, like the best phrase is oppositional energy. They love to go up against authority. They love to push back. Uh, you, sometimes when you're with an eight psychologically, you feel like they're just, you know, kind of poking you in the shoulder a little bit, you know? Yes. And, and, uh, yes. And in fact, I always say to him, and it was just, it was so helpful as I've fallen, you know, into this reading more about him that I'm always like, Oh, you're always, you're always feisty with someone. Who are you feisty with today? Always. Yes. There's always <laughs> someone. And you know, he's us, my husband's Australian. And so I chalked it up to that until I, you know, started understanding and reading more about this. Sorry about that. Oh, that is, that so... is my, that is my beautiful, uh, why my beautiful nine daughter calling from San Francisco on FaceTime. And so it didn't actually mute it for some reason. Oh, well, never mind. That we, we, edit that. we will edit that all That's out. That's interesting because you said that Australians are, it's kind of a seven country, right? Haven't you said that before? Yeah, they have a lot of seven, but they have a lot. I think they also have a lot of eight. Yeah. Well, I just meant like maybe, you know, this eight, seven wing, he has a lot of seven in a mm. you know my time in australia when i've spent time in australia yeah. right i always feel like there's a bar fight about to break out <laughs> <laughs> yes. and you would be you would be correct right uh, there's a lot of eight energy yeah you know? yeah a lot of eight energy. but i think you know one of the things i i am emotional you said i feel things through my heart and i and he is the the eight like i can handle anything i am never stressed like i said to, I, i'm always saying to him, you are are, are you stressed about anything? Is there anything actually, you know, like it just comes at him and he's, and so, you know, this would also be one of the powerful things of figuring out how to support singles out there with 
um, with 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 Enneagrams is that's a really good compliment to me who's so anxious and kind of anticipating four or five steps ahead. And that's probably, you know, maybe some of like the the three in me too, um, the the wing three part. You know, with him, he's like, babe, we got this. Yes. We got this. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, very calming to me. Yes. So. And remember, he reads the world through his gut. Mm. So sometimes yeah. you're with a, uh, an eight, like eight sometimes will act before they think or feel, right? Which gets them into yes. trouble. Yes, yes. You are, you are so brilliant and wise in this world. Anthony. Yes. You know the new year is always a great time to discover new things about ourselves and our interests, right? Absolutely. Well, just as it's important for us as adults to learn new things, it's important for the kids in our lives to make these same discoveries mm -hmm. with a KiwiCo subscription. Kids can discover something new all year long. Through hands-on art and science projects, kids can discover the engineering and mechanics behind everyday objects. The science behind the chemistry of cooking, geography, new cultures, and brand new art and design techniques. This is so cool. Our assistant, Wendy, she has two young boys, mm -hmm. eight and 10, right? Yes, she does. They love their screen time, but they get so excited when they receive their new kit each month. The day the box arrives is now their favorite day of the month. They recently, for example, received their sixth crate and had a great time building a wooden crane and making their own color changing slime. Don't you want to discover and like play with <laughs> color changing totally slime, did. right? Yes. They even gifted an individual crate to their neighbors who made their own paper dolls. Wow. So this year, encourage your children to be innovative, creative thinkers and give them the tools to learn new skills build new experiences, and make new connections to the broader world. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills all year long. Mm -hmm. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with code typology at kiwico.com. That's 50% off your first month at KiwiCo, K-I-W-I-C-O.com, promo code TYPOLOGY. Now, let me ask you another question. Uh, sorry, I'm now running this interview. Tell me, what do you tend to see executives? Is there a tendency for executives to be eights? Great question. First of all, it's partly in industry dependent. Ooh, right? okay. So okay. Uh, I would imagine, well, we see a lot of three, sevens, and eights in upper management because there are okay. very assertive numbers. However, in, let's say, the computer world, let's say, I mean, Bill Gates is a five. We don't often associate fives with, you know, because they tend to be more introverted, more right. heady. More heady. Um, right. Those brilliant engineers may be. Yeah, totally. Yeah. A stereotype would be brilliant coders. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, exactly. But be great pioneers. They're great pioneers and would be in the in Silicon Valley, let's say. You know, right. if, if you but three sevens and eights are very assertive. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, ones uh, you can see in, you know, positions of, of I've seen plenty of ones in positions of leadership twos often lots of times twos make great powers behind the throne yes uh, i read it, about that i don't know if that was in your book or where but yes or they tend to be they tend to opt towards professions like nonprofits or medicine or yeah yeah or they're just they're, i'll tell you what they're great at i see this all the time is uh they're great human resource leaders because they just read people and as I mentioned earlier, they know how to recruit talent like nobody's business because they put such a good forward face on the organization they're representing. Mm. Mm. Uh, if you uh, That said, twos can be very ambitious, especially with a three wing because you pick up all the energy of the achiever, the performer, right? That's that three wing. Mm. And, um, you know, so they can 
you know, then they find their little niche in the world and they're fantastic at it. Now, that isn't to say that other numbers don't have those competencies. It's, it is to say, though, that you actually get calories from doing it. Other numbers might have to burn calories to do the burn same Burn calories job. from doing it. Yeah, where it really gets me going. Yeah, yeah totally. and, You know, this is, uh, you know, you almost, I'm excited to do it with my, the marketing team at OkCupid because I, when you you know, when you understand more about yourself and your tendencies and your blind spots, you, um, I found myself like actually physically, like exhaling, like actually physically feeling this release and, you know, reading that like, okay, twos tend to be, uh, networkers. Okay. That is partly how I've gotten to where I am. Tech is a male dominated industry. It is the hottest, fastest growing, you know, industry in the world, um, love it or hate it. And, um, what am I doing here? What, you know, and I found it very empowering to understand, well, these are some of the things. And also I just feel great. Cause you're like, Oh, you're, you know, you've got a big heart and like, you know, and anyway, I, it's, it's very powerful. Let me ask you this. Are you noticing that corporate America is paying more and more attention to this practice? Holy smokes, yes. I mean, it's just a giant portion of my work, right? Because yeah. uh, here's the reasons why. Number one, and my, my, my audience may be a little tired of hearing me say this, but this is based on a Cornell University Business School study. The key predictor of success in business, and I would argue in relationships, is self-awareness. If you lack self-knowledge and self-awareness, you are going to uh, greatly handicap your advantage in the workplace and in the love space, right? And so, you know, uh, the more you know yourself, the more you understand your blind spots, the more you understand your gifts, right? And the ability as you relate to another human being to monitor and regulate the way that you are acting, thinking, and feeling in the moment from, mm. you know, is like a huge advantage, right? It's a huge advantage. If you're on, if you're just running on autopilot without any sense of self-awareness, you tend to bang guardrail to guardrail through people's lives. That's just how it goes. That is so true. It is so true. And the lack of self-awareness is pretty, is still pretty prevalent. And what happens when you are, you have that knowledge is, oh. is pretty powerful. So in the corporate space, uh, like uh, I'd actually worked at a corporation, Fortune 500 corporation in New York City. I've worked at a bunch of hedge funds. I've worked at, you know, different in California and Silicon Valley, different sort of places. Um, oftentimes I get brought in and they're, I'm working with a team and, um, they're like, the team is having problems with misunderstanding, conflict resolution, uh, maximizing effectiveness, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I come in and I say, look, I'm going to, today I'm going to teach you how to appreciate difference, how to leverage the gifts of different types. Uh, I'm going to give you information that will not only help you thrive in the workplace, but you're going to bring this home and it's going to be a game changer for you in your yes. marriage, in your parenting at mm -hmm. every level yep. and um, in your friendships and, you know, your own personal spirituality, whatever that looks like, et cetera. And um, like I, you know, we can cut this part out because I've told the story before, but I worked at uh, a major, this major corporate corporation in New York City. I came in and I gave an eight hour workshop and I came back six months later and I'm walking down the hallway of this company and I cannot figure out where the head of HR is a follow up visit. I can't figure out where the head of HR is like because there's the numbers on everybody's door. The suites don't make any sense. And she came out and she laughed and she said, oh, those aren't the suite numbers. Those are their Enneagram numbers. No way. Wow. That's amazing. And because they had learned all the different types. Now, when a three walked into a five, they didn't, you know, it's not like you would say, oh, they will always act like this. They will always be like, everyone's, you know, got their yeah. uniqueness. Yeah. However, they knew that the five doesn't like a lot of intrusion. Does they feel depleted by too much relationship time? Yeah. And uh, like I like. And so it just is like um, it gives you such a shortcut into an appreciation and they start to laugh with each other's quirks. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. Or they could also say to each other, you know, Jim, I'm really feeling as a three that you're thinking a little bit more about your own success than the success of the team. Yeah. Right? Or to a two, I might say, this happens a lot. Gee, Melissa, I know that relationships mean the world to you, but we have these reports that have to get done. And I know that means being in your office by yourself outside of the realm of relationship. And I also then can tell, so you got to focus on that too. Or I might say to a boss of a two, listen, you're going to see Melissa going down the hallway, stopping at desks, asking people how they are. She's the one who knows whose every birthday it is, that she knows who's <laughs> getting divorced before everybody else knows. She knows when someone's pregnant. She knows, you know what I mean? And I, I'll say, don't stop that. Like you, she does have to balance it with other forms of work, but that's like her superpower. And, and that brings a lot of the shimmer of care and concern and positivity into the space. Don't tamp that down because it's not like your number. Mm -hmm. Like appreciate the difference, leverage yeah. it, let her be, let her bring her whole person to work and it will really help you in the end. Right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there you go. I have to hear. I have to hear more about this. Okay. I, I we think can I do have that. your email, but I need. I need. I need to hear more. I'll give you my I cell need... number before we get off, and that'll yeah, be, that'd be that'll wonderful. Be easy. That'd be great. All right. So let's uh, let's jump back in, Anthony. Yep. All right. All right. So um, Melissa, I just want to get some some tips that you might have for people who are. You no, know, I think COVID now, Lord willing, is starting to maybe ease up a little bit. Uh, but tell me, like, just tips for dating, whether it's in COVID or just in general. Can you give yeah. me three tips for people about dating? A hundred percent. And yeah, it's been a tough, it's been a tough, are we junior year of COVID? I don't know, but it's, what year is it? Uh, uh -huh. It's been a tough road if you've been single. And here's the first thing I'll tell you, it is a wonderful time to date. And the reason why is people are very motivated and, and, we work with a brilliant social psychologist uh, who helps us understand why are people doing what they're doing, what's going to happen next. And in the in in world or life changing moments, pandemic of the early 1900s, World War One, World War Two, 9-11, uh, there's a marriage boom after because people are so scared to go through with a, something like that again alone. They are. They have been maybe alone or feeling isolated for a period of time. Life has been upended. It has made them overcome all those things that preventing them, whether it was, I, I want to be a little this, I, I'm a little too scared, whatever it is, they are overcoming those things and, and getting out there. So my first advice is just get out there, uh, put the time in. And, and so that's tip number two, get yourself out there. And, and maybe that's going to church. Maybe that's, you know, signing up for something uh, where other single people are going to be. I think it should be getting on a dating app. Okay, Cupid is free, but get on anything, get on anything. Find out what dating app is kind of popular in your area because not all dating apps are popular in all towns or cities. Uh, but, but the second tip is put the time in. You know, I talk to people all the time and women especially are guilty of this. They trained for a marathon. They worked so hard for the career that they have. They're putting time and energy into their friends. They're putting time and energy into their family. They learn to speak German. And then you say, but you know, but then this, but I really want to meet someone. I really, really want to meet. Okay, tell me what does that look like right now? Uh, what do you mean? Okay, are you how are you putting yourself into situations where you're gonna meet other single people? And it's crickets. Or well, I'm on a dating app. It's not really working. Okay. How much time are you actually really putting into that? Uh, so those answers nine times out of 10, uh, when you really push them to say, okay, did you show up at that marathon having put in two minutes a week? Uh, you know, so, so we, and, and you know, this is a longer conversation. I think women are a little bit a victim of this like Disney fairy tale. He's just going to show up and push me out of a moving cab and it'll be, a, I'll be swept away. And that's just not reality, especially as women are working and, and we're not in the social scenarios that used to get people together. And most of that's really great because, you know, we're working with we careers, we're doing all these things. So, so put the time and energy in. My third tip is like two quick insider hacks. And that is, 
if you are on an app, get on the app on Sundays, log in on Sundays, swipe on Sundays, send messages on Sundays. Sundays mm -hmm. are the most popular day on OkCupid and most every other app. Uh, it's like meeting someone at a bar when they're actually there or the coffee shop or the church, whatever your thing is. So Sundays, if you're going to do nothing else, do it on Sundays, but also uh, update that profile or like, again, put that time in um, when you update your profile. And that could just be adding like shows I binge during COVID and list like 10 things uh, or albums that changed my life or authors that changed my life or trips I can't wait to go on when travel's normal again. Uh, your two things happen. The algorithm lights up like you're new and kind of like cell phone carriers, when you're new, you will get lots of attention. Uh, and uh, and the second thing is you're signaling that you're that you care, that it's fresh, that it's interesting, uh, and so um, people respond to that. You're giving them something to to talk to you about. Wow, that's great. If I wasn't married. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Well, Melissa, tell people obviously they can just go find OKCupid okay online and download the app. And uh, I'm sure it has all kinds of other features that uh, are, are helpful to people. And I've loved this conversation. I got, I'm like fired up. Mm -hmm. I am fired up. I, I, I have learned so much. This is so interesting. By the way, if you go on OKCupid and you see someone else go on OKCupid, put your Enneagram, message me on Twitter. I'll give you a, a year of OKCupid premium, which is our $50 a month version. I, I, I think that I'm going to come back on because people are going to meet through this. They're oh. going to be encouraged to share it. I I yeah, cool. I think I think there's something really uh really fun. I think And will you really marry a couple that meets as a result of this podcast? <laughs> I'll pay for the honeymoon and you'll marry them. I feel yeah, like if I get to, if I get to go to St. Bart's with them. <laughs> Oh, it has yeah. to be. We'll it, be has like, to, it needs to be in a tropical, beautiful location. Yeah, it definitely has to be a destination wedding. De destination wedding for these. sure. <laughs> exactly. I can't thank you enough for having me. I have learned so much. This has been so lovely, and and thanks for what you put out there to help to help folks. And today, I think we help single people. Yeah, I absolutely do, and that's that's what the show is about. We're a helping show. So, Enneagram uh, Typology listeners, remember these words: May you have love. May you have joy. May you have peace. May you have healing and may you have rest until the next time we're together.